Minesweeper is a tile-based solitaire game where a few randomly selected tiles have mines placed at them, meaning if you try to step on those tiles, you'd instantly lose the game. However, tiles without mines give a value when clicked, showing how many mines are within its eight neighbours. To familiarise ourselves with it, let's try a simple game. As we can see, the value of this cell is zero, meaning all of its neighbours must be safe. Therefore, we can step all of its neighbours with no concern. This strategy is often implemented automatically as a comfort feature, clearing out huge chunks of the board for us. Now that we've reached the point we need to consider the mines themselves, we need to introduce the second rule of our strategy. If a cell's value equals its neighbour count, those neighbours must be mines. For example, this cell here only has one neighbour we haven't stepped on, and its value is 1. Therefore, that untouched cell must be a mine, so we'll flag it indicating that fact. Moving our focus slightly to the right, we can deduce that these three tiles must also be safe to click on, as we already know the position of the mine neighbouring this tile. This is our next rule, which generalises our zero value strategy. If a tile's value equals its number of flagged neighbours, all remaining untouched neighbours must be safe. We can now reuse these two strategies over and over again in an attempt to clear the board. For a lot of cases, these two strategies are actually sufficient to clear the board. However, as is evident in the board we're currently trying to solve, that's not always the case. In many problem-solving fields, there exist so many problems which can be grouped together as functionally identical. For example, navigation software like what's available in Google Maps often uses the exact same strategy used by chess engines like Stockfish, reducing the entire problem down into an abstract tree and searching that tree to find the optimal result. Observations like these stem from the ability to abstract any problem down, and oftentimes represent it using a clever choice of mathematical objects such as matrices and vectors, or functions like polynomials, oftentimes in a surprisingly unique way. In our case, arguably one of the simplest objects in mathematics, the set, will be useful. A set, quite like its very generic name, is a very basic mathematical object. It is a collection of different items, where we don't care about the order of the items, nor whether any items are repeated. You can create all sorts of sets. Sets of numbers, an empty set, the set of all green fruits, anything you want. When representing small sets, we can use a pair of braces, or curly brackets, around all of the elements in the set. Using a Venn diagram, we can represent the elements of multiple different sets. The union of two sets, notated with this U-like symbol, represents all items which exist in set A or set B. The intersection of two sets, notated with this N-like symbol, represents all items which exist in both set A and set B. In a sense, we've actually already used this operation before. The set of flag neighbours of a cell are the intersection between the set of flags and the set of neighbours of a cell. Our third operation, the set difference, notated with this backslash, represents all items which exist in the set A, but not in set B. Finally, we can find the size of a set, notated using these vertical bars. Again, this is an important operation we've already used before, the number of mines surrounding a particular tile. In this game, we can use the idea of a set to describe all sorts of features of our board, such as the set of neighbours around a particular tile, or the set of all flagged tiles, or even the set of all mines. From this, we have now transformed our problem of solving Minesweeper into a problem of working out all the elements of a set, which may sound like we've made our problem harder, but abstractions like these allows us greater insight into how to develop strategies and solutions for them. Returning to our original board, let's consider these two adjacent cells. Their neighbours, here coloured in red and blue, we can call the sets R and B. We know these sets contain 1 and 2 mines respectively, which we can represent like so. Ignoring the game board entirely, thinking of R and B purely as sets, we can see there are two possible layouts for the relevant mines. In the first case, there could be no mines in just R alone, R set minus B, one mine in both sets, their intersection, and one in B alone, B set minus R. The other possible configuration, however, has no mines in their intersection, so there'd be one in R set minus B and two in B set minus R. Returning to our game board, we can immediately see a problem with one of these layouts. There is only one tile in B set minus R, 
the single blue tile on the right, so this second configuration must therefore be incorrect, as there just aren't enough tiles to include the two mines stated. Another thing that's important to note about this configuration is that the number of mines in B set minus R equals the difference in the mine counts, because all the mines in R are in the intersection of R and B. As we've shown, there's only one configuration where this is true. We'll return to this point later. Now that we know the number of mines in these smaller sets, we can reapply the strategy we established earlier. The mine count of R set minus B is zero, so all tiles in R set minus B are safe, and the mine count of B set minus R equals its size, so all those tiles must be mines. For this board in particular, we can now return to exclusively the two rules of our first strategy and complete the board. Returning to our strategies in the abstract, we can represent the conditions necessary for our two original strategies like so. The number of mines in some set S equaling the size of S means we can flag everything in S, or the number of mines in some set S equaling the number of flags in S, here represented in the same way we've used for mine counts, means everything in S that isn't flagged must be safe. Establishing our two rules in this way although seeming overly complicated, is important for working out the specifics of our newest strategy. Considering the mine counts of these two example sets, A and B, we can subtract one from the other. As can be seen in our diagram, this is in fact only the difference between these two regions, A set minus B and B set minus A, as their intersection is included in both A and B and is therefore eliminated. This is important because, remembering back to what we noted in our example, the only valid configuration where we can use this strategy is when this difference equals the size of the equivalent set difference. If the set difference is larger, the information we get is incomplete. We can't work out anything new. If the mine count difference is larger, however, the configuration is impossible by the rules of the game. Therefore, we can deduce that if these two differences are equal, we can use this strategy, and the equality we established down here tells us that all the mines we find must be in A set minus B, as there can't be a negative number of mines. Consequently, we have found a result which matches one of our rules, where the mine count of a set equals the size of that set. However, the other set doesn't quite fit our second rule. It implies the flag count in that area is zero, which is an assumption we've accidentally created. In many cases, our strategy should work fine as is. However, let's re return to the game to try out a different example where this assumption is false. In this new example, we have flags on both sides which we'll need to consider. All we need to do to transform this into a form we do know how to solve is to just remove the flags. Subtract off the number of flagged neighbours and treat the flagged cells just like those we've stepped on. Bear in mind, removing these flagged mines decreases the mine counts for our two sets. The condition this time around is reversed in comparison to the first time we did it as the blue set is larger this time. The difference in mine counts this time then is 1 and the size of the set, R set minus B, is 1, that being the single red square on the left so the strategy still applies. As we ignored all the flags, we know the flag count in R set minus B is zero, so it all lines up with our two simpler strategies. That may seem a bit complicated, so let's look over everything we've worked out. Here's an algorithmic representation of what we've done, which means while the board hasn't been solved, we first consider tiles which might give us some information from our primitive approach. There are approaches of how to decide which to consider, which would be useful to know when getting a computer to adopt this approach, but for now we can just eyeball it. For each of those tiles, if its value equals its neighbour count, consider those neighbours' minds by flagging all of them. If its value equals its flagged neighbour count, consider all other neighbours safe by stepping all of them. We repeat this for all mines that the strategy might work on. We then move on to our second approach, which will probably work best when the first yields us no results. 
Consider two nearby tiles this time. We ignore all flagged neighbours, both in our neighbour sets and the set values, here done by naming those non-flagged neighbour sets NFNA and NFNB respectfully, and the modified values A value and B value. Take the difference of these modified values. If this difference equals the size of the set of tiles near the first but not near the second, those tiles are mines, and the other tiles near the second and not near the first are all safe. To finish off, this approach is in no way perfect. If you're on the search for a complete strategy, this approach will just not net you all of the available information provided by the layout of the board. For example, it doesn't take into consideration how many mines are yet to be flagged, or which tile is the best option as a first choice. As I said towards the start of the video, this strategy comes from reducing the problem into a simple mathematical object. This is in no way the only approach to doing so, as this was only chosen for human readability, so I wouldn't be surprised if a strategy twice as effective has been constructed using alternative means. This only has a win rate of about 20% on the standard hard difficulty. Thanks for watching all the way through. I hope something of value has been taken from this, even if it is just learning the rules of the game for the first time.